excited to be back here and to introduce our next presenter. Sherry Saria is founder and director of Living Light Culinary Arts Institute and co-owner with husband Dan Latterman of three other eco-friendly businesses. Often called the mother of gourmet raw cuisine, Sherry has taught students and world famous chefs and instructors from around the world for over 16 years. Sherry is also the author of three books including Angel Foods, Healthy Recipes for Heavenly Bodies, and the newly released Raw Food Revolution Diet, Feast, Lose Weight, Gain Energy, feel younger. Please give a warm welcome to Sherry Saria. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here for Ch uh, Breakfast of Champions Part 2, the Green Breakfast. I know that many of you uh, are not able to eat grains for one reason or another, or you want variety in your breakfasts. So now I'm going to share with you some of the breakfasts that we often enjoy in our home. One is a green juice. Another is a green soup. And I'm also going to be talking about the difference between a green soup and a green smoothie. For those of you who are coming in late, make sure that you get your ticket so that you're insured of getting a sample. Don't forget to get your ticket for samples, and I think that they're giving them away in the back. Okay, so we'll, we'll get them for you. Don't worry about that. Um, all of you who have seats will have samples. Okay, so I'm going to start by talking about the green soup. And a green soup does not vary a whole lot from a green smoothie. The biggest difference is with a green smoothie, you're using more fruit than greens. And in a green soup, you're using more greens than fruit. But the fruit really helps to balance out the greens. And we're going to have a little lesson in just a moment about flavor balancing the dynamics of flavor, how you can bring balance to flavors, and which flavors balance out which others. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my beautiful board over, because as you can see here, this is my fruit side. It has a well on this side that captures all the sweet, juicy fruits as I cut, the ju cut them, and they, they flow, the juices flow out they would flow over the sides if I didn't have a well. That also alerts me that I don't ever want to use anything but fruits on this side because that way I know that when I'm cutting my fruit, I'm not contaminating it with, with things like onions and garlic. So I was showing you some dishes a little while ago that were sweeter dishes and they had fruit and I cut fruit on it. Now I'm going to turn it over so that now we're using the savory side. All right? So, just wanted to, you know, any little tip that I can give you can be helpful. I really personally n do not like my melons with garlic. So, <laughs> so we make sure that that's something that our students always know. All right, so as I said, I'm going to be showing you how to make a soup. And what's important to know is, is that when you're making a soup or a smoothie, you want to have enough of, 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 of the flavors that balance each other. And if you have something like kale, for example. This is a, a dino kale, or sometimes people call it dinosaur kale. Um, it's very bitter. All of the dark leafy greens are bitter, and they're not really palatable just by themselves, unless you're pretty hardcore raw foodist. You know, you probably wouldn't just be, you know, chomping on this. Uh, so we, we try to make it a little bit more balanced in flavor by adding something sweet, like an apple or an orange. Now the orange has an extra added benefit of being also a citrus or an acid because acid also helps to balance out the bitterness of, of the greens as well as the sweetness of the fruit. So think about whenever you have something that's tart, you usually add something that's sweet. The reason is it brings balance to it. And the same thing with whenever you have something that's bitter, like a salad, you usually have something like a dressing that has both sweet and sour, right? Because they bring balance. One of the really important things that every chef has to know is how to bring balance to their sauces, their dressings, their soups, and their marinades. Uh, if you can make a great sauce, you're a great chef. That's all there is to it. And so one of the things that we really focus on here at Living Light right away at the very beginning of a training is understanding the five basic flavors. Sweet, salty, 
sour, which is the same thing as acid, bitter, and what did I miss? Savory or pungent. So the dramatic flavors like garlic, onions, um, chili, horseradish, like, which would be the same as a powdered mustard, for example. Those flavors are pungent flavors, and they add drama. And we love drama, don't we? We love drama. And most people love to have some of those in their foods. Now, some more pure purists, I guess, uh, or people who have digestive issues may leave out pungents. They may not uh, appreciate having those kinds of wild flavors in their belly, the things like chili and mustard, especially people who are super tasters. There's a, a segment of the population, in fact, about 25% of the population who are super tasters. They really can't handle those strong flavors. Uh, it's just too powerful for them. They're the ones that can't take any chili, just the tiniest bit of chili, and they say, oh, that's too strong, I can't take that. They're super tasters. It's not a choice. It's a chemical, it's a chemistry, a body chemistry. So don't make judgments about them. It's like, well, get over it. No, <laughs> they can't. <laughs> so, uh, so be kind um, and, and feel sorry for them in a way because I love my chili and garlic and onions and uh, I wouldn't want to have to leave them out. But then, you know, that's just my choice and the things that I like and I have to honor that they're really happy with the foods without it. So. All right, so this is the green that we're going to be using in our, in our green soup right now. But I want you to know that you don't have a recipe for this. There is really, even though, yes, I have a recipe, what I want to show you right now is a method, is an idea, is a concept that you don't have to have a recipe in order to make a great soup or a great smoothie or a great juice. Basically, you look in the refrigerator and see that you need something green. All right, so we're going to have something green. You need something that's got some tartness, some sort of acid. It could be lemon, it could be orange, uh, it could be tamarind, it could be berries. Berries are also acid fruits that have both sweet and sour. So anything that has sweet and sour components. If you want it, if, you, if the greens that you're using are something as bitter as kale or dandelion greens or something like that that's very bitter, you probably will want something extra sweet like an apple. Um, but if it's romaine, you may not need an apple because romaine is not as bitter as kale. If you're using something like cilantro or basil, those are pretty bitter as well. And again, you're going to want to use something that's sweet. Now, it may just be a date. Maybe you don't have any other fresh fruit. You can throw a date in. That will help to balance it. You'll have to add more liquid because apples are high in water and dates aren't. So, uh, you, but you'll see that it'll be easy because your blender won't be moving. Oh boy, I guess I better add some liquid. So it's kind of a no-brainer, you know, it's going to be easy. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And first I'm going to give you a little bit of a lesson in the Vitamix. You don't have to have a Vitamix to make a soup. You can make it in any inexpensive blender. The big difference here is that I could make as much as I want. I could take this all the way up to the top if I want, and it's going to blend it quick and easily. If I have a regular blender, uh, say a Hamilton Beach blender, cost me $20, I just can't, can't fill it all the way. I can fill it halfway. And I, I probably will want to chop up some of the fruits and vegetables rather than putting them in whole. All right, so I'm going to show you right now how to remove these stems. And I'm not going to get rid of the stems. I'm going to put them in my juice. But for my soup, I want my soup to be smooth. I don't want to have to overwork the blending process in order to make my soup smooth. If I add these tough stems, I'll have to really blend it a lot to get these smooth. And then I'll be blending air into my soup that's going to make it more like a whipped consistency. I don't want frothy soup, so I'm not going to put these in. And notice how I do this. I just made a little bit of a cut on each side, and I pull. That's how you remove <gasps> Ooh, ah. <laughs> and that's what I have left. And so now I can just put that right in the blender just the way it is. But I'm going to show you about this blender because I said I would. This is a Vitamix. This is my favorite blender. I treat it with care because I love my Vitamix. I have owned a Vitamix for about 30 years. I bought one the first time at a state fair. 
and you have those people who are hawking the machines and everything. I watched it and I was sold. I was not a raw fooder at the time, but I was a vegetarian, and they showed how to make bread using whole grains. They actually put the, they couldn't bake it in here, but they did everything else. They kneaded it, ground it into flour, and I was like, okay, sold. And I've had one ever since. And it has translated for me from the cooked world into the raw world so beautifully. This is a high-powered blender, which means that it's, it's like uh, the difference between a Jaguar and a Volkswagen, I guess. Uh, it just goes really fast. And we have three different three different knobs for this here. Uh, we have the on-off switch. We have a, 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 a control that takes it from one, which is slow, all the way to 10, which is fast. And then we have overdrive, and that's this one here. So once you get to 10, seems like you can't go any higher, but if you put it into overdrive, wow, it really cooks. Uh, and it does cook. You have to be careful. In fact, you don't want to walk away from this because it'll get so hot that it will literally cook your soup. I used to, when I was in the cooked world, I used to put uh, split peas in here, turn it into a powder, and then put my water and seasonings and everything in. I'd turn it on, leave it on for about five minutes, and I'd have cooked split pea soup. So it really does cook. So be really careful. So this is overdrive, and you do want to stand next to your blender when you're using that. And I'm going to start this out on one and on low, and right now it's on off. So we're going to fill the blender up, and then I'll show you how to work it. Okay, so I'm going to add a, uh, an orange to my soup. I really love oranges in soup, and I'm cutting off the outer peel, and I'm leaving as much of the white pith underneath the skin as I can without being too anal about it. I'm using a, a knife to do it, and sometimes I take off more than I want, but you see I'm leaving some of that on. The reason that I'm leaving it on is because I want the riboflavonoids that boost the absorption of the vitamin C in the orange. So they work together, vitamin C and riboflavonoids, so I'm keeping a little bit of that on. And all I have to do is just cut it in half and throw it in because it's a Vitamix. I don't have to worry about the seeds or anything. It's going to take... Uh, take care of that for me. I'm also going to add an apple, and I'm just going to cut around the, the core. And really, I could go like this and add that too. Yeah, that's a Vitamix. It'll just chew it all up. Now, if I were doing a lot, I would probably take the seeds out because uh, the seeds have just the tiniest bit of strychnine. And, you know, I mean... It, Believe me, this is not going to kill you, I promise. But it's only one apple. And I can eat two or three apples and eat the core and everything, you know. I'm still here to tell about it. But I probably wouldn't eat them all day and use that as my only meal. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and continue on. I'm going to add some water to this because it's going to need some water to, for the blades to turn. And another um, acid, I, I put in already a bitter and a sweet and sour and a sweet, which was the apple. And I'm adding a little bit more also of sour, and that is lemon, because I actually like a little bit of tartness in my, in my green soup. I'm also, and you could just take the stems off of these for me, please, Robin. This is my assistant, Robin. She just graduated from the Gourmet Chef Certification course. She was here for six weeks uh, doing that training. And then she also graduated from the pastry arts class. And if you join us this evening at Cotton Auditorium, and I don't know why you wouldn't, it's the highlight of the weekend, uh, if you come early, you can taste some of those great desserts that she and her classmates made. They were really fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to put in the rest of the, of the kale. I think I'm going to hold off on, on putting any more of that in until... Uh, until I get everything else in, though. And I'm also adding some green onions. You can leave the green onions out. If this is breakfast, you might not want the green onions, and you may not want the garlic. I'm adding one clove of garlic, and you can put the garlic clove in, skin and all. It's a Vitamix. It can handle it. All right? And then I'm also adding some light miso. Light miso is both sweet and savory, both sweet and salty. And it's just wonderful in, in anything like sauces or dressings or soups. It's kind of that 
uh, that secret ingredient. Whenever you taste something and it's not quite right, it doesn't have the, the high and the low that gives it a full roundness, this may be the answer. Light miso. The dark miso could work too, but it, it has a much stronger bottom. In other words, it's deeper in flavor. It's saltier. It's richer. It would be like the difference. I, I almost hate to say this because I've been a, a vegetarian for over 35 years, but it would be the difference between chicken broth and beef broth if you were making a soup. For those of you who are cooked food chefs, you know what I'm talking about. I'm adding a little bit of cayenne pepper because I'm a spicy girl. I like to have my cayenne pepper and a little bit of salt. Uh, not too much salt because we have the miso in there. And the miso, remember, is a little bit salty itself. Okay, now I can continue with the rest of my of my green, so there's the rest of my kale, and I'm also going to be adding some cilantro. Anybody here not like cilantro? Yay, because I was going to say, sorry. <laughs> it's done. Okay, now there's one other ingredient that I'm adding to this recipe, and that is the avocado. Avocado. It's like the meat for vegetarians, isn't it? It's just, I know everybody's going, <gasps> The avocado. Yes, we love our creamy avocados. But I have to say that after writing my most recent book, The Raw Food Diet Revolution, I found that avocados are not as high in nutrients as some other fat sources are. And so you really don't want to have too much avocado in your diet. Um, even though I grew up on avocados, it was my first baby food. And in fact, in Santa Barbara, where I grew up, we had 75 avocado trees. Even our dog used to go pick up the avocados off of the ground, and we'd find them everywhere half eaten. Um, but the avocado will add a beautiful creaminess to this soup. But my suggestion is that you keep it down to about half an avocado a day. And the reason is if you fill up too much on fats, even whole food fats, your body doesn't have enough room left for the higher nutrient-dense foods. And you want to make sure that you, are, that you eat enough high nutrient-dense foods. And that's why I wrote the Raw Food Revolution Diet book, because I found, as I started doing research, that the raw food diet is actually extremely high in fat. Now, in the beginning on a raw food diet, your body is saying, wow, I feel so much lighter, so much better, more energetic. And that's because you stopped eating all the cooked fat, and now your fat source is raw fat, and your body can handle the raw fat better. But still, in the long run, you want to cut down on the amount of fat that you're eating and choose the right fats to eat. And the best fats are going to be whole food fats, not fractional fats like oils. Now, we as culinary artists do use some fractional fats. But choose good fractional fats like olive oil. And if you're going to have olive oil, maybe have some olives in the same meal. So there's a synergistic relationship between the oil and the food that it came from. And you're at least getting that, you know, that relationship, the needs of the relationship met. Um, and, and don't use too much of it. We, we, when my co-authors and I, they are, are registered dietitians and authors of many great books on health and nutrition, uh, determined that about two teaspoons per person per day is about all you want of a fractional fat. So that's about one salad dressing. So if you're going to have two salads in a day, you can have one with, with fractional fat and one with a whole food fat, like avocado. So if you have a choice and you're making a soup, choose the whole food fat, and then that way you have room later on in another recipe for your fractional fat. OK, so I'm holding this out until I blend this mixture. And I'm going to be needing my plunger, so I've got a pull off this top and put the lid on and use the plunger to force down uh, all of this, uh, I have it, thank you, all of this mixture into my Vitamix. Okay. Now, I, what I don't want to do, and this is something that I see students doing when they come in to the class, even though they may have had a Vitamix for a lot of years, is they'll leave that plunger in even after they, don't, they no longer need to force the product down into the blades. And what you, why, the reason you don't want to do that is because you have to allow the vortex, that's that uh, kind of like the tornado, you know, that tornado, right, the tornado that, that makes the, the, everything whizzes around that hole in the middle. If you plug up the hole, 
then you're not getting the, the vortex energy that pulls everything down into the center and can push up again. You want it to go down and come up and go down and come up. And you can't do that if this is in the middle. So you have to work it a lot harder and you end up with that frothy uh, soup that I told you about earlier. So let's go ahead and turn it on. It's going to start on low, except that it's not plugged in. Okay, well, that's a little bit of an oversight on my part. The, the nice thing about this uh, Vitamix, too, is that it has a place where it hides the cord. I really like that. Okay, that should have told me right there. There we go. Okay. So we'll go ahead now. Let's make sure I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Oh, it's on overdrive. Ooh, scary. <laughs> and you know what happens? Now, it wouldn't happen in this case because I have all this product piled up on top. But if it were already liquid and I turned it on high, everything would shoot up to the top and half my soup would be in the lid. And so what I try to do is I try to turn it up slowly. In the beginning, of course, I'll turn it up high until all of this makes it down into the blades. Then once it makes it into the blades, I'm going to turn it way down and I'll turn it up slowly so that it doesn't splatter all over the place. It's kind of a personal challenge that I have. Okay, it happened pretty quickly, didn't it? And did you notice how it was all the way up to the top and now I've reduced so much? If I wanted to add more greens at this point, I could. So I just got it started so that the, the Vitamix chewed it up and then I can add more greens if I want. But now what I'm going to add instead is a half an avocado. So I cut the avocado in half. And now I'm actually going to turn it and I'm going to cut it in half again. So it has a, a it's actually now in quarters. And the reason is, is that's the reason because I want it to just fall off of the, of the uh, seed and be able to peel it easily just like that. And that's the easiest way that I found of peeling my avocado is cutting it in quarters first. And this particular, uh, particular skin is a little bit hard to get off. Every now and then you get one that's kind of brittle. So now I'm going to add that to the mixture and plop, plop, plop. Okay. And the reason I didn't add my avocado in the beginning is because it is a fat and when it blends it emulsifies the mixture and will get thick and then start to whip uh, air into it. And as I said before, I don't want this to be really worked. But I am going to add the rest of my water. Did we get rid of that water? Okay, I need a little. There we go. There's the rest of the water. Because I can see this is going to be thicker than I want. Okay, I didn't add it all the first time. And this is not really, as I said before, this isn't, this isn't rocket science. You go into your refrigerator, you pick a green, you pick a fat, you pick an acid, and you pick a sweet. And then if you want some kind of dramatic flavors, you pick some dramatic flavors. Could be chili, could be horseradish, whatever you happen to have. Could be ginger, whatever you want. So it's, uh, it's actually pretty easy to make with whatever you happen to have around the house. Okay, so let's turn this on, blend up that avocado. I don't even mind if the avocado is a little bit lumpy. I love being able to get that little jewel, you know. In fact, sometimes I'll chop up the avocado and put it in instead of blending it. Or I'll blend in half of the avocado, which means a quarter of an avocado, and I'll chop up the other half, which means the other quarter, <laughs> and uh, then I'll, I'll uh, enjoy the little chunks. And speaking of chunks, I really like to have a little bit of color in my soup, so I'm going to add another sweet and sour, another sweet and acid fruit. A tomato. Tomato is a fruit. 
fruits have seeds and tomato has a seed, so it's a fruit. And a lot of the fruits that we usually think of as vegetables are really fruits. If they grow on a vine, uh, if they grow above the ground and they have seeds, that means that they're a fruit. So I'm gonna chop up some tomatoes and I'm just gonna show you a fun little way. Oh, my knife has been borrowed a few times. <laughs> and it's a little bit on the dull side. Speaking of knife skills, we're going to be having a knife skills class following, um, following the, the expo on Monday. And for those of you who can stay over, the knife skills class is really a great way for you to feel more confident in the kitchen and be able to put out a great product. And it's one of the raffle prizes. So you could win the knife skills class, you could win the Victorious uh, the Victoris Seminar, the Dr. Dina's Raw Nutritional Science Introduction Seminar, and Fundamentals of Raw Living Foods, which is an all-day course happening on Tuesday. So you could win all of those. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just chop this up, or dice this up, not chop it, but I want a really a, kind of a fine dice. And... And I'm going to put that in my soup for two reasons. One is it's really important to chew. And if you have a soup that doesn't have anything in it to chew, you're, you're likely to just swallow it. And so I find if I put something in it that makes me chew it, that I, you know, because digestion starts in the mouth. And if I'm just swallowing it, I'm not getting that first level of digestion, which is really important. So, all right, so I'm going to, I, there I have, you could call it a garnish. But the reality is, is to me, it's much more than a garnish. It's a flavor enhancer and also a color enhancement because now I don't have just one solid color for my soup. So here's my soup. It's beautiful, thick, rich soup. Doesn't look like I have any avocado chunks in there. Oh, darn. And I'll put my tomatoes. I like to have my tomatoes right in the middle. And you could put chili oil on top. If you have chili oil, that could be really nice, or a little bit of cayenne pepper. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of pumpkin seed oil. I really, pumpkin seed oil is so good for you. And I'd really like to have uh, a little bit of that. So I'm just going to put a few little droplets of pumpkin seed oil on that. And that is a yummy soup. And I can eat soup like this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In fact, I put in an order at the beginning of the expo for a quart of green soup every day. Because I am a woman on the go. And I don't always have time to chew. <laughs> and I don't want to eat fast. So if I have my soup with me, I can sip on my soup and I get all the nutrients I need. This is a meal. It's a meal in a blender. And all I have to do is rinse that blender and go. And I real that works for me. So here's a, it's a great breakfast, it's a great lunch, and it's a great dinner. So there you have it, green soup. All right, thank you very much. And we have some samples of that for you. And we're gonna do a little, I didn't do a little taste test of that, but we'll wanna do that in the back, just because I did just kind of put everything together without tasting. Where can you get pumpkin seed oil? Um, this pumpkin seed oil is, is Flora brand. I believe we carry it in our marketplace. It's Flora brand pumpkin seed oil. You'll only find it in the refrigerator case, I think, in, um, in health food stores. Or you can contact Flora at flora.com on the internet. And the wonderful thing about Flora is they will literally make it and ship it to you the same day and then put it in your refrigerator and don't ever let it sit out of the refrigerator because it's a very sensitive uh, oil and it can go rancid easily. But it's a very health promoting oil. Pumpkin seeds are great for you. Question? Um, Heather. What are some of the other helpful fats that you find more helpful Well, avocado oil is actually a very good fat and olive oil is a good fat and pumpkin seed oil and flax oil. And you'll see that in my book, Raw Food Revolution Diet, you'll see that any place where I used olive oil, I usually used half flax oil and half olive oil because flax oil is very high in omega-3 fatty acids. Um, two other oils that are high in omega-3 fatty acids would be olive oil and chia seed oil. 
and you could use, uh, or, and hemp oil, that's another one. So you could use any of those oils as garnishes. You don't want to, um, to cook those oils. They're very, very sensitive to heat. Olive oil would be one that you could cook with, um, but we don't cook here at Living Light, so it's not a worry for us. Uh, you, you, you know, coconut oil for a soup isn't so great because it's, it's very thick and it adds a lot more body than I want in a soup. It also has a, ver a stronger flavor. I want a soup that's not going to change the flavor so much. Okay, a question over here. Yes, thank you for asking that. All of the recipes for the soups and the juices and even green smoothies are all in my book. So uh, you can get those all in this book. And uh, I'm happy to sign that for you tonight after the program. Right after this program, I am going to be running over to Town Hall for that great panel, The Secrets of Ageless Women. So I won't be able to meet you downstairs to sign the book quite yet. Question over here? Uh, walnut oil, it's hard to find walnut oil that isn't roasted. Uh, you have to really look for it, but you can find it. And I can't tell, we don't have that for sale, but um, I have found it before. Okay, so this is a Green Life juicer. It's my favorite juicer. You can see I've had it for a really long time. Um, we have the lid taped to this. I don't need the lid right now. We want to make sure we, it doesn't get separated. Um, so the Green Life juicer is wonderful because it is a, a, a dual auger uh, juicer. That means it has, it has uh, augers, two augers, that go like this. They have like knuckles, right? And they fit inside of each other. And they literally press the juice out, which makes it really special. It doesn't chew the juice up. It really is more of a press. And that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. The Champion juicer has teeth. So it chews the juice, and it makes it warmer. Um, if you put cold carrots or cold apples or anything cold into here, you're going to get cold juice coming out. With a champion juicer, and I have a champion juicer, and I use it for other things, uh, not green juice, because it really doesn't make green juice, uh, it, 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 it gets very hot, and it can easily overheat. And what you really need to do is you need to put an ice pack over the machine so that it doesn't overheat and turn itself off uh, if you're using it for a period of time. So, um, so I don't use the Champion Juicer for very many things. I'll use it to make pate because it's a little faster. This is a slower juicer, but especially for things that are green, it's better for two reasons. One is when it's cooler, that means it is less likely to oxidize. Uh, oxidation is not a good thing. You don't want your fruits and vegetables to oxidize. The other thing is, is, is the truth is you can't make a green juice in a champion juicer or many other kinds of juices. What you'll get is little dribbles of juice. You won't get juice pouring out. And that's because it just doesn't have the ability to press that juice out. And you're going to end up with a lot of wet pulp, which is not what you want, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and start making this juice. And once again, this is not something that is, I'm going to need my board back. Actually, I had you taken away. Um, this is not something that you have to uh, think about a recipe for. This is just whatever you happen to have on hand. Basically the same kinds of ingredients as you had in your, in your soup. I'm not going to be putting garlic in it today. But you could. I'm not going to be putting onions in it, but you could. I'm not going to put chili in it. Or I put cayenne pepper in the last time, but you could put fresh chili in it if you wanted to. Sometimes I have fresh cayenne, and I like to put a fresh cayenne pepper in it. Uh, there's, you could put you know, any of the same things that you had. You could put basil leaves. In fact, what we do at the school is we save all the skins of, of our zucchini and our, our, our um, all the skins of the good skins, not avocado skins, but cucumbers, zucchini, apples, anytime we're having to take the skins off of something for the perfect culinary masterpiece, we don't want to throw those skins away. That's where the majority of the nutrients are. So what we do is we save all of those great scraps and we make juice every day. So the students get to learn how to utilize all of their produce and not waste it. 
Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make a juice. It's really simple. Um, you have to make sure that you have something under here to capture the juice, and here you have to have something to capture the pulp. Make sure that you wash your produce really well, and if you do, you'll find that, uh, that you can use the, the pulp for things like crackers, and uh, you don't have to throw that pulp away. And I don't think this is going to fit in here. Well, it will if I take this off. Maybe it will. I'll put it in this way. Yeah, let's cut it, let's cut it lengthwise. Can you do that for me, please, Robin? Thank you. And you'll have to cut this lengthwise, too. Okay. So that is one thing that you do have to prepare some of these a little bit more than you do for it in your blender. So I'm going to turn this on. Well, I would turn it on. Power. Why is this not turning on? We didn't plug it in still. We took the, we took the, that's so funny. We took the cord out, but we didn't actually plug it in. Okay. Now we have power. Power to the people. Woo. Woo. Power to the raw foodists. Okay, so now we have, isn't that nice and quiet? So much more quiet than a champion. I have nothing against a champion, nothing against it at all, but I do like this. You know, I don't have a, oh, here's my plunger. All right. So the one thing that you, you do need to know about, uh, about this machine compared to the champion is that it's slower. It takes more time, more muscle, but you know what? It's okay, I don't mind. And here, I'm not going to get rid of the stems at all. In fact, I'm going to feed its stem first. Thank you. And watch it just take it. If you feed its stem first, it's really easy. And here are those stems. Remember those stems that we took off? We just use those as well. No reason, to, no reason to get rid of those. And here's some parsley. Let's put some parsley in it. Parsley is so high in vitamin C, one of the highest sources of vitamin C. It's just wonderful. And I'm going to add some cucumbers, mostly for the water content. Okay, baby, you can do it. Okay, there we go. Now, the first bit of pulp that comes out may be a little bit wet, so I'm going to put that back in. But then after that, it will be nice and, nice and dry. Thank you. Okay. Now, something that is as juicy as as a cucumber, I won't put in all at once. I like to vary it so that I, I put my cucumber in every other piece or something. And here I have some celery. I'm going to put some celery in for some really good sod natural sodium and other nutrients. Some apple. Again, remember I talked about apple helping to, uh, to mellow out the flavor of the bitter greens. And that's not a whole lot of apple for the amount of greens that we have here, so we'll see if we need to add more later. Put some more kale in. Notice how I, I vary. Vary what I'm putting in here. Okay, baby, you can do it. Okay. Be that way. I win, no matter what. Okay, and we're going to give you samples of this very soon. This is quiet enough that if, I, if I'm continuing to feed this, you could actually ask me questions. Have any questions? You don't. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let you come over here and do this and look at this beautiful juice that we're getting already. So I'm going to need, let's take it out. Good. All right, and I'm going to let, I'm going to let you stand here, Robin, and I'll ask, answer some questions. Okay. Okay, the question has to do with how we wash our produce. Of course, we get all organic produce, um, but still you need to wash your produce. And you can wash it in plain water, but you need to rinse it well under, uh, under flowing water. Or you can use a, a vegetable wash or a hydrogen peroxide mix. And we use hydrogen peroxide quite often um, as our sterilizing solution here at the school. We always put our dishes into a sterilizing solution. And we don't like to use chemicals. We're a chemi you know, the chemical free uh, is the best way for us to be. So we use hydrogen peroxide um, mixed with water for that. 
We actually get food grade hydrogen peroxide and then and you have to be trained to know how to use it because it is it can really burn your fingers. But you buy food grade hydrogen peroxide, which is very strong. How long what? How can you keep your green juice after you make it? Well, that's one of the benefits of the green, green life or green power uh, uh, family of juicers is that because it came, went in cold and it came out cold, it's not going to oxidize and go bad as fast. So I will quite often have to make my juice in the morning and, and e either have it an hour later or maybe even save it until afternoon, especially if I want a second green juice in the afternoon. And, and I haven't noticed a difference in the flavor. Now, that doesn't mean that it hasn't had some nutrient loss. As long as it's refrigerated, though, I think it's had minimal nutrient loss compared to if I were uh, using a different kind of juicer that heated it. So uh, it does maintain the nutrients better. OK, another question over here. Okay, that's a good question. She's asking if you can make frozen banana ice cream in one of these because a lot of people use the Champion Juicer and Robin is saying yes. She knows because we have, we have ice cream socials here and we do use it uh, for making ice creams, uh, uh, actually sorbets, out of any frozen fruit. So you could put frozen mangoes, frozen strawberries, frozen bananas, and in one side and out the other side is soft serve ice cream and it's fabulous. Yes, thank you for that question. Um, okay, the question has to do with will the hydrogen peroxide remove stains from white plastic? I don't really know if they will or not. The best thing to do is to rinse your white plastic like your juicers immediately. And uh, we do soak soak them and it can lighten a little bit but I don't know that if you have a big buildup of minerals and uh, that it's going to take it away completely okay so Marie says that okay she says you can use baking soda and water and put your juicer parts in it and leave it overnight and it will remove the stains Good idea. And right now you have some samples of juice coming out. And right after the juice, you're going to have samples of soup. Uh, but in the meantime, and if you can just kind of not be talking about how much you love it yet, um, I'm going to continue to take questions. What other healthy fatty foods can I use in my soup? or in general, soaked seeds are really great. And in fact, in my book, I talk about the difference between soaked seeds and other fats. Um, they're really health promoting. So you could add sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and sesame seeds, chia seeds, and, uh, and hemp seeds, all good sources of protein and calcium and omega-3 fatty acids. You could use uh, walnuts, soaked walnuts. Those are really good sources of omega-3 fatty acids as well. So seeds and some nuts could be good fat sources. OK, another question here. Any vegetables I would avoid eating raw? Um, white potatoes. I wouldn't eat white potatoes raw. Typically. Um, I actually like the heart of the artichoke. You can't eat the outside leaves of the artichoke, but you can take the leaves off and eat the heart. Um, if it tastes good, if it's a vegetable that, tastes, that you like cooked and it tastes good raw, then you can eat it raw. There are some things like, I've, for example, a beet. You wouldn't take a big bite of a beet the way it is, but if you texturize it using a spiralizer, it's wonderful in a salad or with a sauce. So sometimes it just is a matter of texturizing it properly in order to be able to eat it and make it palatable. So white potatoes would be the one thing that I can think of right offhand that I would definitely not eat raw. But, um, okay. Let's say you don't have a green light yet. Would it be the next best thing to make the juice the champion or the vitamin? Okay. The question is, if you don't have a, a, a green life juicer yet, um, yet, I know, I heard the word yet, 
Uh, what would be the next best thing, a Champion or a Vitamix? Well, if you want greens, it's going to be the Vitamix because the Champion will not give you green juice. Uh, what you have to do with the Champion is take the leaves, stack them on top of each other, roll them really tight like a really thick cigar, and feed them in. But you're still not going to get a lot of juice. You're going to have to take that pulp and put it back through again. Now, with a Vitamix, you're going to end up with a soup because it's going to have all the fiber in it. So you'll have a soup and not a juice. Yes. So really the best thing if you want to have this green juice is to use a machine like this or a press, which is like over $1,000 or maybe more. So big difference. One last question. Can you juice wheatgrass in this? Absolutely, yes. This, you, can, you can juice pine needles in this. And that's, I mean, actually, there is something that they use in Europe that requires pine needles. So they say it in their literature, you can juice pine needles. I've never done it, but I believe them. So that's it for me. I hope that I'll be able to see you again this afternoon. Thank you very much. Bon appetit. Mm. Yum. Okay. I'm going to take...